Virgil van Dijk is the greatest Dutch footballer of all time. Nah, I'm just kidding. He doesn't even make it into the all-time 11. Let's get into this though and we'll see what the best Dutch all-time starting 11 would be. Okay, before we jump into the video, I've noticed that most of you guys are not subscribed. So please take a second and please, please hit that subscribe button. Turn on notifications whenever I post a new video. It would mean the world to me if you did. I appreciate you guys' support so much and it would mean the world if you guys continue to help out. Anyways, please enjoy the video. Just to preface this, a lot of these players are going to be coming from the time when Ajax was dominating european football in the 1970s and the netherlands national team was absolutely incredible and they had gone to two world cup finals in 1974 and 1978 so most of these players are going to be from that era we're going to put them into a 4-1-2-1-2 formation and let's get into it at goalkeeper, we have the Ajax and Manchester United legend Edwin van der Sar, the ultimate example of hard work. He started as a young man at Ajax, won 14 major trophies, including a Champions League in 1995, and then finessed his way up into being the CEO of the entire club. After a spell at Ajax, van der Sar decided it was a good idea to be Gigi Buffon's backup at Juventus before making an even better decision to go to newly promoted Fulham. Surprisingly, he won a trophy there, and his addiction to winning relapsed, so he moved to Man United where he won 11 more including another Champions League in 2008. The man was an excellent penalty stopper and was great with his feet and coming off the line too. Manuel Neuer actually credits him with being Manuel Neuer before Manuel Neuer was Manuel Neuer. Van der Sar retired in 2011, but I guess he got bored of sitting in a chair and actually played one match with his boyhood club for funsies. Now the man does his former club dirty by selling overrated wingers to them for 100 million euros. Edwin van der Sar. At center back, we have the king of free kicks. His Barcelona players may hate him, but the Dutch certainly don't forget about Ronald Koeman, just about as loyal as Hakan Chalanalu. He played for Groningen, Ajax, PSV, and Feyenoord, but most people remember him for his Barca days, where he helped them win 10 trophies. If it wasn't for Messi playing like an alien, Koeman would have had the most free kicks scored as a defender in Barcelona history. Yes, you heard me right. This dude would hit you with the crunching tackle on one end of the pitch, and then launch a rocket into the back of your net on the other. Just pray that he doesn't manage your club, especially if your name is Lionel. All messy. Coming from Surinamese immigrants and playing football in the streets with his childhood friend Rude Gullet, Frank Reichard is an absolute sweat. Usually a defensive midfielder, but we're going to put him at center back because he was just as good at this as he was at any other position on the pitch. I don't know what went down at Ajax, but even though he won seven trophies with them, he hated his coach Johan Cruyff and eventually made his way to Milan. Two European Cups later, forgiveness won and he made his way back to Ajax where he took home another Champions League in 1995. With him in defense, the only way you're getting past him is if your name is Rude Voller and he gets red carded for spitting in your hair. Beautiful hair with the bling around his neck, our left back is Rude Kroll. You have to be a great if you're captaining Ajax's six league titles and three European titles. His leg may have been broken for one of those, but hey, who cares? He still has more trophies than you do. Only heaven knows why he dipped to join a Canadian club in 1980, but luckily he made his way back to Europe with Napoli after just one season. You don't hear many left backs being third in Ballon d'Or voting, but hey, that's how good Rude Kroll was. On the right side, we got Vim Serbier, another member of the famed Ajax 12 Apostles that won three European Cups in a row. Tack on two World Cup finals, he's regarded as the best right back in Dutch history. Known for his pace and stamina, those two attributes didn't seem to stick though as he fell in love with California and moved there to play for multiple different indoor soccer teams. Rest in peace to the Dutch legend. Willem Van Hannigan will be the defensive midfielder for our team, nicknamed the Crooked because he was fantastic with passing the ball with the outside of his foot. Pretty cool name until you realize that he was also bow-legged and couldn't run fast at all. Mainly known for his days at Feyenoord, he helped them win their only European Cup in 1970 before bouncing around to other various teams in the Netherlands and even in Chicago. A very physical player to have in your squad, especially if you're playing against Germany because this man did not hold back on his hatred for the Germans due to World War II. At right midfield, we're going to have Johan Nieskins, regarded as one of the best midfielders of all time. Nieskins was made of steel and even his teammates said he was worth two men on the pitch. Criminally underrated and spent half of his career in Johan Cruyff's shadow. They even nicknamed him Johan II. If it wasn't for him though, you can forget about Ajax's European Cup 3P and the two World Cup finals for the Netherlands. Barcelona and Ajax fans alike can thank Nieskins for setting up Cruyff to be the legend that he is. On the left flank goes Rob Rensenbrink. 
He spent the majority of his career playing for Belgium inside Anderlecht, so he might seem a little confused running around the pitch with his fellow Dutchman. But once he gets onto the penalty spot though, the light switch flips on as he only missed two penalties in his entire career. For comparison, Pinaldo has missed 29 and Pessi has missed 31. His greatest achievement must have been being runner-up for Ballon d'Or in 1976, in which they rewarded him by handing over a newly created bootleg Ballon d'Or. May the European Cup Winners Cup all-time top scorer rest in peace. Our attacking midfielder is none other than the 1987 Ballon d'Or winner, Ruud Gullit. This second generation Surinamese Dutchman was on top wherever he went. He took second division side HFC Harlem back into the top flight and even qualified them for Europe the next year. He then moved to Feyenoord and was Dutch Footballer of the Year before dipping out due to racism. At PSV, he was named Dutch Footballer of the Year once again, which actually made Feyenoord pretty mad, so you can add Gold Digger to the list of chants that yelled at him. Sick of the racism, he decided to go to an even more racist league by joining AC Milan for a world record transfer fee. Two European Cups are worth it though I guess because he stayed there for a while before moving on to Sampdoria to win the Coppa Italia. His final challenge included being not just a player but the manager too and leading Chelsea to win their first trophy in 26 years. Tack on a Euro title with the Netherlands in 1988, this man could play any position and win any trophy he wanted. Marco Van Bastien, the biggest what if in football three Ballon d'Ors before retiring at the age of 28 due to injury, who knows what ceiling the striker had. The 16-year-old Ajax kid led Europe in scoring multiple years in a row before moving on to win 10 trophies at AC Milan. Legends everywhere claim Van Bastien as the most complete striker they had ever seen. The only weakness he had was that he had the ankles of Steph Curry. He must have ruined the referee's parlays one too many times too because sliding challenges without punishment is what eventually led to the injury-riddled short career of this bicycle-kicking genius. Our other forward up top is none other than the GOAT Dutchman Johan Cruyff. This man tore teams apart with the smile on his face during his Ajax days before moving to Barcelona on a world record transfer fee. An odd career change to pig farming which costed a millions took Cruyff to America to start a new life. However, American soccer just wasn't the same as European football, so he made the move back to Europe pretty quickly. Cruyff was so good that if he wanted to sign for your team, you sign him to your team. This is exactly what Ajax didn't do the second time around and he was so mad he went to arch rivals Feyenoord just to spite them and even won the league double there. Goat player wasn't enough, so 22 trophies later, Cruyff called it quits and went on to be the goat manager as well. With more trophies and awards than you can count, including three Ballon d'Ors and a European Cup three-peat, Johan Cruyff did it all. He even invented a move that just about everybody uses now. Just please keep a cigarette out of his hand. Rest in peace to number 14. And lastly, our super sub has to be Pete Kaiser, a one-club man at Ajax, the left winger won everything there was to win. Dutch journalists even said, Cruyff is the best, but Kaiser is the better one. Enough said. So there you have it. This is the best all-time 11 in Netherlands football history. Van der Sar in goal, Komen and Rijkaard at center back, Ruud Kroll at left back, Wim Serbier at right back, Willem van Hannigan at center defensive mid. On the right midfield, we have Johan Nieskins. Left flank is Rob Brensenbrink. Attacking midfield is Ruud Gullit. And then the two forwards up top, Marco van Bastien and Johan Cruyff with Pete Kaiser coming in as our super sub. This team consists of some of the best players that football has ever seen and one of the best all-time teams we have ever seen as well.